page 73. The 19th lesson. Lean. Adjective. Thin. Not fat. Bears are lean in the spring because they hibernate all winter long. Do you like lean meat? To rest against something in an angle. I am leaning against the wall because I'm tired. Verb, to bend over. The man leaned over to pick up the broken clock. The word lean has at least three different meanings. That is why we say it is a homonym. A homonym is a word that has the same pronunciation as another word but with a different meaning. Sometimes a homonym also has a different spelling like the words deer and deer. A deer is a wild animal that lives in the mountains and can run very swiftly. The male or he deer has long horns. Deer is an adjective which means loved. When we write friendly letters we put the word dear before the name of the person to whom we are writing. For example, dear Pat. The word lean can be used as an adjective or as a verb. An adjective is a part of speech or a word that is used to describe the quality or characteristics of a person, animal, or thing. Adjectives are also used to classify things, limit their extension, and separate one thing from another. For example, you have a box of eight pencils. Each pencil has a different color, a green pencil, a red pencil, a yellow pencil, and so forth. Each pencil is classified by the colors red, yellow, green, and so forth. The word pencil is common to all eight pencils and as a matter of fact, to all the pencils of the world, but not all pencils have the same color. In this sense, adjectives limit the extension of words. Likewise, if we say the red pencil is long, but the green pencil is short, the adjectives long and short tell us that the red and green pencils not only have different colors but also different sizes. The more adjectives we add on to a word, the more specific the word becomes and the less extension it has. Page 74 a language like a car has many parts. These parts are called parts of speech. Each part of speech has many words that make up a language. In English, there are eight parts of speech which are called adjective, noun, verb, adverb, conjunction, interjection, pronoun and preposition. 
Each part of a car has a different purpose. The motor makes the automobile move. The steering wheel keeps it on the right direction. The windshield protects the driver from the wind and so on. The same thing can be said about the parts of speech. Each one has a different function, as we have already seen about the adjective. We will learn more about the parts of speech as we go along. The word lean is also a verb with two different meanings. A verb is a very important part of speech. It is like the motor of a car. We say that the engine or motor is essential to the automobile because without it the car won't move. Verbs express action. They tell us what the subject does and when he does it. In the sentence I am taking the book. I is the subject. Am taking is the verb. And the book is the direct object. Since the verb tells us what the subject does or is doing, we can ask the question, What am I doing? And we'll come out with the answer, I am taking the book. Verbs also express time. They tell us when the action took is taking or will take place, as if I say, I was born, I am living, and I will die. This is the reason why we say that verbs have different tenses, namely the past, the present, and the future. Page 75. The mouse ate the cheese. The poor mouse was caught in the trap. Now compare these two sentences. The mouse ate the cheese. The mouse was caught in the trap. In the first sentence, the mouse, subject, did the acting. Namely, he ate the cheese. We say that the mouse is active because it performed an action, which is eating the cheese. But in the second sentence, the mouse is definitely not active. It is passive. The words passive and active are antonyms. You have probably heard the expression, he is a very active man. It means that this person does many things. The contrary to an active person is a passive person. A passive man is one who likes things to be done for him. He prefers to get rather than to give. To knock out. To be knocked out. One thing is to knock out, and another thing is to be knocked out. The prize fighter who knocks his opponent out wins the match. The boxer who is knocked out loses. A verb not only expresses an action done by the subject, but also an action suffered by the subject. That is why they are classified into active and passive verbs. Passive verbs go with the verb to be, to get, and to become. These three sentences practically mean the same thing. He was hurt. He got hurt. He became hurt. Page 76. Shoestrings. To get hurt. 
To become engaged. To get married. What is the antonym of lean? Why are bears lean in the spring? Do you sometimes lean your elbows on the desk? What is a homonym? What is the difference between the noun dear and the adjective dear? What is an adjective? What is an active verb? What is a passive verb? What is the difference between to give and to get? Do you think it's better to give or to receive? Which boxer wins the fight? Which one loses it? Do you get hurt when you bump your head against something? When someone gets hurt, do you ask the question, are you hurt? What does the expression, she became engaged, mean? Does it mean that she is engaged to get married? Yes, it does. What are the eight parts of speech? Why do adjectives limit the extension of words? Does to extend mean to make bigger or larger? Yes, it does. Does to limit mean to make smaller or shorter? Yes, it does. Does to make more specific mean to make a thing clearer, to describe it more so that we may understand it better? Yes, it does. Page 77, the twentieth lesson. Ja. Hinge. Ja. The bone in the lower part of the face that holds the teeth and is used as a hinge to open and close the mouth. Hinge. Two pieces of metal that turn on a pivot used on doors to make them swing open and closed. A door usually has two hinges. Some boxes, suitcases, and trunks have hinges. A suitcase. A trunk. Every person, animal, and thing in the world has a name. Shirley, rabbit, Needle, Acapulco, are names. The name is not the person, animal, or thing, but it is so closely united to it that we can hardly separate one from the other. Each language has a different name for different things. Take the word bird, for example. People all over the world know what a bird is. Yet in Italy, it is called uccello. In Mexico, pájaro. In France, oiseau. If an object and its name were one and the same thing, the object would have the same name all over the world. But it doesn't, and that is why we say that a name is not the person animal or thing. Bird, pájaro, uccello, waso. The world and the universe are made up of many things. Each thing is called by a name in order to distinguish it from all the other things. Almost every nation has a different name for one thing as we have already seen in the word bird. This makes things more complicated. Things would be more simple if all peoples would speak the same language.